The Equitable Life Assurance Society presents This is Your FBI. This is Your FBI, the official broadcast from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation, presented as a public service by the Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States and the Equitable Society's representative in your community. Father, what New Year's resolutions have you made this year? Going to cut down on smoking? Going to give more thought to your waistline? All right. But why not make a really important New Year's resolution? One that will mean greater happiness for your family. One that will not only carry through 1947, but for many years to come. Follow the example of so many fathers who start the new year right by increasing their family's protection with the Equitable Life Assurance Society in January. Resolve now to give your loved ones increased security through life insurance. Then keep that resolution by getting in touch with your Equitable Society representative tomorrow. Tonight's FBI file, The Fugitive Guest. This week sees the United States enter its 171st year of freedom. In those years, the country has faced many bitter struggles for survival. Struggles that have included half a dozen wars. In every one of those wars, our freedom was threatened. But the combined efforts of all of our citizens brought us through to victory. Now, in 1947, it will take the combined efforts of every one of us to win another war. The war against crime. The crime wave cost the people of the United States hundreds of millions of dollars in 1946. And the cost will be increased this year unless we all, every one of us, fight the crime wave with as much concentration as if we were fighting a foreign enemy. Tonight's file opens in a small farmhouse located in a remote section of one of our eastern states. It is night. The occupants of this dwelling, Edward Gray and his wife, are sitting in front of an open fire. Edward? Huh? Oh, I'm sorry, dear. Were you sleeping? Uh, I must have dozed off for a second. You want something, Louis? Well, the fire's getting kind of low. It could stand a couple of logs. Oh, oh, sure. There. How's that? Fine, Edward. Thank you. (sighs) Listen to that wind. Mm, Yes. And look there at the window. Snowing pretty hard. Mm-hmm. How about the livestock? Now don't worry about them. They're all safe in the barn. <laughs> Good. Edward. Hmm? I, I think I hear someone outside. Listen. Yeah, there is somebody. Now I'll go look. Put on your coat, Edward. Oh, I won't need it. There's someone on the steps. Yeah. It's a woman. Here, let me get you inside, lady. Oh, oh thank you. Edward, what in the world? It's a woman. I found her on the steps. Good heavens, who is she? I don't know. I just had her here on the couch. Well, is she hurt? Should you get a doctor? No, doctor. Please. Let me get warm. Let me stay here. That's all I ask. Well, well, just don't stand there, Edward. Let's let's make her something hot to drink and put her to bed. In a large city a hundred odd miles from the isolated farmhouse, Special Agent Jim Taylor in the local FBI field office is just answering a summons from the agent in charge. Come on in, Jim. Thank you, sir. I suppose you're all set for your vacation. Yes, sir. I shove off in about three hours. 
You're going up near Hendersonville, aren't you? That's right. Yeah. Wonderful hunting up around there. So I've heard. I'm just going to dig into those woods and stay lost for two whole weeks. Jim. Yes, sir? I hate to ask you this. You can turn me down if you want to. But as long as you're going to Hendersonville... Yes, sir? There's some extracurricular hunting you could do on the side. <laughs> I knew I should have left yesterday. Well, let me give you the story. A female inmate in the county jail near Hendersonville, who was being held on federal charges of violating the National Property Act, escaped about two hours ago. Oh, who is she, sir? Her name is Doris Parker. She was also charged with knifing another woman in a fight over a man. I see. She's evidently quite proficient with a knife. She also used one on a matron to make good her escape. Well, have we anyone on the case now? Yes, Royce Thompson, our resident agent in Hendersonville. He's working with the local and state police. Well, that's sparsely settled country up there, sir. There's not many roads. If she stays in the car, they shouldn't have too much trouble. Finding... I know. Chances are she'll be picked up before you even get there. But in case there's a hitch, Jim, why don't you drop in on the resident agent before you take that hunting trip? See if you can give him a hand. Snowman. Oh. Good morning. Good morning. How are you feeling? Much better, thanks. I thought you'd still be sleeping. Well, I got hungry, so I came down here and sort of helped myself to breakfast. Oh. That woman who was so nice to me last night, is she your wife? Well, Louise, yes. Isn't she around? Yes. She's in the front room there. I hope she doesn't mind my puttering around in her kitchen. Oh, she'll be glad you did. You see, well, Louise is bedridden. Oh. So you have to more or less help yourself. But she was in here last night. Oh, I carried her in. I see. Uh, look, Miss... My name is Ruth. Well, uh, Miss Ruth, I've been thinking, is there anyone you'd like for me to notify... Let them know you're here, all right? I, I, we have no phone here. There's but... no one worried about me. Oh. I suppose you're wondering what I was doing out in the storm last night. Well, yes. I'm a waitress at a hotel in Hendersonville. Got the day off, so I rented a bike. Thought I'd take a look at the country. Uh-huh. Well, I rode too far. Storm came up, and I just got stuck in it. Well, I'll arrange to take you back into Hendersonville sometime today. Must you? What do you mean? I'm really not in any hurry. Edward! Edward! Uh, be right with you, Louise. Thompson? That's right. I'm Jim Taylor. Well, well, hello there, Jim. Welcome to Hendersonville. Thanks. I heard you were coming down here. Yes, this is the first day of my vacation. I heard about that, too. Oh. Or anything turn up on that escape prison? Well, she hasn't been found yet, but I think you'll be out hunting real soon. How's that? Well, as you probably know, the Parker woman escaped last night from jail in the matron's car. Yes. The car was last seen on Route 45 heading towards Springdale. I see. This morning, one of the state troopers found evidence that a car had skidded off a small bridge over the Springdale River. On this same Route 45? That's right. The guardrail on the bridge was smashed, and there was a large hole in the ice where the car had evidently broken through. Have you been out there yet? Yes. Couldn't see the car, but I found a license plate on the ice nearby. It's the one we're looking for. And how about the Parker woman? Not a trace of her. You think this was a trick on her part, or is she really down there in the car? Well, we had quite a storm last night. It could be legitimate, but we'll find out soon enough. Oh, how's that? There's a diver going over there this afternoon. Well, that should tell the story. Have you checked into your hotel yet? No, I came out over here to your office. Look, why don't you go over and check in and make arrangements for your hunting trip? I have an idea that you'd be on your way this afternoon. Who 
Who's that? Me. Ruth. Oh. Do you mind having company? No. Got lonesome up there in the house. Oh, but you'll find it kind of cold out here in the barn. I'm okay. What are you making? I'm just repairing this harrow. Oh. Hey. Hmm? You know something? What? This would be a swell place for a barn dance, <laughs> wouldn't it? Yeah, we've had them here plenty. What, one of them regular old-fashioned ones? Uh-huh. With an old geezer playing a fiddle? Uh, sure. Oh. No, when Louise was well, there was always something doing around here. Really? Sure. Picnics, sleigh rides, barn dances. Do you like to dance? I'd love to. I golly. Ed. Huh? How long has your wife been like to you? Over a year now. It's a long time. Uh, I suppose it is. I hadn't thought much about it. Does she keep on like this? I'm afraid so. The doctor says she'll never walk again. It's pretty tough. She takes it fine. Oh, I don't mean for her. I mean you. How do you figure that? Oh, look. I can see the kind of a guy you are. You like to dance, have fun. Now you're going to spend the rest of your life playing nursemaid. Well, I don't mind that. Oh, who are you kidding, mister? Look, I... I oh, wait was... a minute. I really came out here to ask you a question. Seems like a real good time to do it. Well? I don't want to go back to Hendersonville. I'd like to stay here a while. Would you like me to? I... I gotta go do some chores. <laughs> I come in, Royce? Sure thing, Jim. Just called your hotel. Well, I've been out all afternoon picking up supplies. Oh, any report from that diver? Yes, he located the car. Oh? It's the one we're looking for, all right. How about the woman? Not a sign of her? Uh-huh. I half expected that. Well, the car door next to the driver's seat was open, Jim. She could have made an attempt to get out and been pulled downstream under the ice. Yes, I know. In that case, with the river frozen over, we might not recover the body until spring. Royce, I just have a hunch that she isn't in that river. I think she sent the car off the bridge to take the heat off. That's very possible. Is that a map of this district there on the wall? Yes, yes. I've been using it for this search. Take a look at it, huh? Sure, sure. What do all these pins here represent, Royce? Well, most of them are the uh, roadblocks that were set up right after the escape. Mm -hmm. This is Route 45, and here's the bridge. Yeah. Royce, how much snow fell out there last night? At least a foot. Some places it drifted pretty heavily. Then if she did abandon the car, she couldn't have gotten very far. No, no, not unless another car picked her up. Has a house-to-house check been made? All along the highway, yes. Anybody live back up there in the hills? Well, I'd say a dozen farmers pretty well scattered. Have they been checked? Not yet, no. Are the roads passable up there? Yes, they were plowed today. Well, Royce, why don't you mark off the exact location of those farmhouses and we'll divide them up. There's still time this evening for us to go call on them. Finish your chores? Yeah. I waited for you. I sort of hoped you might come back. I went for a walk. I could have gone with you. I wanted to be alone. I wanted to think. What about? You're staying here. Well. Edward? Edward? Coming, Louise. Excuse me, please. You want something, Louise? Edward, where's that girl? In the other room. Close the door, please. Sure. Something wrong? I think so, yes. What is it? I was just listening to the radio. They were playing music when the announcer interrupted the program for a news bulletin. Yeah? It told about a woman who had escaped from the jail last night. Gave a complete description of her. Right down to the clothes she was wearing. Huh? Edward, that escaped convict is the woman we took in. Ruth? Yes. Well, it can't be. I tell you it is. You've got to notify the police. But Louise... The man on the radio said she's a very dangerous woman. You've got to get word to the police at once. Wait a minute. Where are you going? Get her in here. Ruth. Yes? Would you come here a minute, please? Sure. 
What do you want? Louise just heard something on the radio about a woman who escaped from the county jail. From the description, she she thinks it's you. Will you please tell her you're a waitress in Hendersonville? Sure. Where are those clothes she wore last night? They're upstairs. Why? Will you go up and get them, please? What for? The escaped prisoner was wearing a prison dress. Please go get her clothes. Wait a minute. You don't have to. Now, will you get the police? Maybe he doesn't want to. Maybe he wants me to stay. What? Ask him. Edward. Louise, I... She stays. From tonight's file, to which we will return in just a moment, we can see that one of the primary jobs of the FBI is to uncover the facts of a case. Armed with these, they can then take the proper measures that will inevitably lead to the solution of their problems. And the same thing is true of fathers. But instead of trying to get at the facts about his family's future, many a father lives in a sort of dream world. He refuses to ask himself this simple question. If I should die... How would my family get through the critical years before our youngest child finished high school? How long would my wife and children continue to be well-fed, well-housed, and well-clothed? If you really love your wife and children, don't shrug your shoulders to that question. Be fair to your family and get an answer based on facts. To help you, the Equitable Life Assurance Society has prepared a special fact-facing chart for fathers that has these three advantages. First, it's simplicity itself. You can fill it out in five minutes flat. Second, you are guided every step of the way by easy-to-understand pictures which illustrate the unavoidable expenses your family will have to meet. Third, when you're finished with this fact-facing chart, you'll have a clear, accurate, and complete picture of just what income your family would need during the critical years. I guess you're right, Mr. Cross. That fact-facing chart is something I've been needing for a long, long time. How do I go about getting one, and how much will it cost? Why, it doesn't cost a cent. The Equitable Society representative in your community will be glad to bring you a copy of this fact-facing chart. Phone him tomorrow, or send a postcard care of this station to the Equitable Society. That's E-Q-U-I-T-A-B-L-E. The Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States. And now, back to the FBI file, The Fugitive Guest. It is an established fact that honest citizens cannot mix with criminals any more than oil can mix with water. And for that reason, your FBI wishes to pass on some advice. Advice which, if heeded can save you untold misery. That advice is, do not, under any circumstances, condone the doings of a criminal. And by so condoning, expect that your sympathy will regenerate the criminal into a useful member of society. In dealing with criminals, reality must serve as your foundation. And reality tells you that over 50% of all persons arrested have a previous arrest record. That is not a theory, but a fact. A fact that is proven by the files of your FBI. Tonight's file continues at the farmhouse. Edward Gray is seated in the common room, gazing reflectively into the fireplace. The woman who calls herself Ruth enters. Ed. Yes, Ruth? How is she? My wife? Yeah. Is she still sore? She asked me to leave her alone. Well, that means you can be with me. Oh, please, Ru. Oh, look. Quit worrying, will you? If you don't call the cops, there'll be no trouble. How do you know? Because they think I'm dead. Or at least they will when they find the car. What do you mean? I sent the car I was driving off a bridge. It went through the ice into the river. 
Oh. When they find it, they'll think I wound up in the river, too. Wait. Hmm? There's a car stopping outside. What? You better get into the back room. Okay. Hurry up. Just a minute. Yeah? Hello there. You Mr. Gray? That's right. My name is Taylor. I'm a special agent of the FBI. Here are my credentials. Uh Uh-huh. Well, what can I do for you? Well, you may or may not know, sir, that a woman held on federal charges escaped from the county jail over in Hendersonville last night. Uh, I hadn't heard about it. We have good reason to believe that she's still in this vicinity. I see. I have a picture of her here. Take a look at this, please. Sure. Ever seen her? No, sir. I've never seen this woman before in my life. She's a pretty tough customer. I already used a knife on two people. Stabbed them? That's right. Well. Well, if by any chance she should turn up here, I'd advise you to notify us at once, please. Uh, yes, sir. I certainly will. Thank you. Good night, Mr. Gray. Good night. Ruth. Yes. That was a man from the FBI. I know. I heard him. I seem to think that you're not dead. Yes. What do we do now? Oh, I don't know. Let me think. Edward? Yes, Louise? Stay here. I'll see what you want. What is it, Louise? Who was that? Who came to see us? Well. Tell me, Edward. It was a man from the FBI. Looking for her? Yes. What did you say to him? Answer me. Well, I told him that she wasn't here. Oh, why did you do that? Can't you see that she's using you, playing up to you just for her own protection? Louise, she's not... I'm not turning her in. That you, Jim? Yes, Roy. Well, you're just in time for some hot coffee. Well, well, where'd you get it? Uh, I picked up a thermos full on the way back. Did you have any luck? No, no, I didn't pick up a thing. How about you? No, I didn't get anything either. Well, that's that, I guess. Oh, thanks. Royce, let me check my list with you, huh? See if I missed anyone? Sure, sure. Go ahead. Okay. Uh, Clinton. Yep. Dixon. All right. Franklin. All right. Martin. Yeah. Henderson and Dillon. Yeah. How about Gray? Oh, I wanted to ask you about him. Do you know him, Royce? Yes, uh, casually. Why? Well, when I showed him the girl's picture, he was quite positive about never having seen her before. I'm always a little suspicious of someone that certain. Ah, uh, no, there's nothing wrong with Gray. He's lived around here for years. I know his wife, too. She's an invalid. You mean she's bedridden? Yes, yes, she has been for over a year. Royce, does anyone else live there with him? No. Are you sure? Yes, why? Come on, we're going back to Gray's farmhouse. <laughs> What you want? Just wanted to talk. About me, I suppose. Yeah. What you say? It's not important, Ruth. I want to know. Well, Louise said I was a fool to be shielding you. You were playing up to me so I wouldn't turn you in. You don't believe that, do you? Ruth, I don't know what to believe. What do you mean? The stuff that FBI man said about you, about you stabbing people, that that wasn't nice to hear. That was a lie. Louise told me they said that about you on the radio, too. Oh, look. She's just trying to make trouble for me. And she's going to keep on that way unless we do something about it. Huh? Oh, Ed. Ed, I've been thinking about us. Now that the cops know that I'm not dead, we can't stay on here. We've got to go away. We? Yes. Ruth, I couldn't leave Louise. Louise? (laughs) She's a helpless cripple. She will be for the rest of her life. She's no use to you, herself, or anybody else. Don't talk that way, Ruth. Well... All of a sudden, you're sticking up for her. She's my wife. Wait a minute. You're not backing out now. Don't forget you're involved in this thing, too. You told that cop I wasn't here. But, Ruth... So you're not only leaving here with me. I'm making sure before we do that she isn't going to talk. What do you mean? I'll show you what I mean. Where are you going? In to see your wife. You come back here. All right. What? Stay where you are, both of them. Are you... The man from the FBI. That's right. Why'd you come back? How did you know I was here? You told me yourself. What? 
You see, after my first visit, I learned that Mr. Gray's wife was bedridden. That made me very curious. What do you mean? I had to find out who was pacing up and down in the next room while I was at the door. Oh. Thanks for the tip-off. For her guilt in violating the Federal Escape Act and the National Stolen Property Act, Doris Parker was sentenced to 10 years in a federal penitentiary. Edward Gray was sentenced to two years in a federal penitentiary for harboring a federal prisoner. And so another file was closed by your FBI. Closed because of superior skill in the art of detection. The possession of such talent by a special agent is not a fortunate accident, but the studied result of long, hard labors. Labors which every agent undergoes as part of his training. Nothing in the training of a special agent is left to chance, because that is not the way your FBI works. Your FBI works to eliminate chance and to substitute certainty. And that policy has paid a dividend called protection. A dividend being collected every day by the people of our country. In just a moment, we will tell you about next week's exciting case from the files of your FBI. When the breadwinner of a family dies, what are the critical years for his wife and children? The critical years are the years before the youngest child finishes high school. Years in which the home must be kept together. To help you estimate just what income your family would need during those critical years, the Equitable Life Assurance Society has prepared a special fact-facing chart for fathers. Your Equitable Society representative will be glad to bring you a copy of this fact-facing chart. Phone him tomorrow or send a postcard care of this station to the Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States. Next week, we will bring you another colorful story from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation, The Souvenir Gun. The incidents used in tonight's Equitable Life Assurance Society's broadcast are adapted from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation. However, all names used are fictitious, and any similarity thereof to the names of persons living or dead is accidental. Tonight, the music was composed and conducted by Frederick Steiner. Your narrator was Dean Carlton. This is your FBI, is a Jerry Devine production. This is Milton Cross speaking for the Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States and the Equitable Society's representative in your community and inviting you to tune in again next week at this same time when the Equitable Life Assurance Society will bring you another thrilling story from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation, The Souvenir Gun, on This Is Your FBI. This is ABC, the American Broadcasting Company.